Introduction to Research Procedures. This is the outline of this lesson. The first question would be, what is research? The book says research is a systematic process collecting and analyzing information or data for some purpose. If we compare a news article with the research work, we can better understand the research work or the research. Why? because the research work is more a systematic process than books or other news articles. The next question is, what is a good research? There are many different types of research work, different subjects, approaches, and methods, but people prefer systematic one, valid one, and a reliable one, because that is the one that is considered to be a good research. This is an example of a systematic process. The first step is identifying the problem, and then we review the information, then collect the information or data, then analyze the information. The final stage is we draw a conclusion. This is not the only way to conduct a research, but a lot of the researchers follow this procedure. For example, like this, someone conducting research in a systematic way we would consider that as a good one. Next characteristic of a good research is its validity. How about this example? A valid certificate or a valid license. In terms of research validity, it is defined as a capability of being justified or strength of an argument. Validity can be divided into two different types internal and external validity. Let's talk about the external validity first. It can be defined as a generalizability of the conclusion across subgroups, places, and times. Internal validity can be defined as tenability of the casual conclusion on the basis of the results. Valid research. In this example, we have two different research designs. Let's compare the two in terms of research validity. Which is more valid or less valid in terms of internal and external validity? A reliable research can be defined as the consistency of a research and the extent to which studies can be replicated. Internal reliability is the extent that data collection, analysis, and interpretations are consistent. This is not quite the concept of a reliable or a not a reliable car, but similar. Internal reliability example. We have a teacher. If the teacher is a generous grader when she's happy and a tough grader when she's angry, we can conclude that she's a bad teacher. Why? Because her grading system is not reliable. In research, the exact same idea can be applied. If you do not choose the same method, interpretations within that specific research, your research is not reliable because your method, analysis, and interpretation is not consistent. What about external reliability? One example could be secret research. You conduct a research and you find out the great research outcome. If you don't provide any details of how you did it, people cannot consider your research as unreliable because your research is externally reliable. To be replicable, a research study must include adequate descriptions of the procedure and conditions of the research. Let's compare research design A and B in terms of internal reliability this time. Relationship between validity and reliability. Based on this Venn diagram, valid one is a subset of the reliable one. Every valid one is a reliable one, but we cannot say every reliable one is a valid one. To become a valid one, it has to be a reliable one. 
Please try the four true and false items. With all the information from the previous slides, please try identifying the internal and external validity and internal and external reliability of research design A and B. This is the summary of this lecture.